A quick announcement before we start this episode, I did want to point out to those of you that have already purchased the book, there was some formatting issues on the ebook version of it that we didn't realize before, and some pages came out really wacky. So we are working to solve that right now, and if you bought it on Kindle, for instance, from my understanding, it will automatically upload when we submit the corrected version. It might already be corrected by the time this episode comes out. But I did want to let you know, just in case you got that, you were a little bit worried that maybe this isn't the product you thought it was or the quality you thought it was. So just throwing that out there, it will be fixed and there's nothing to worry about going forward. So here's the show. Welcome to the Medical Menemist Podcast, your source for memory techniques and accelerated learning in higher education. Now, here's your host, Chase DeMarco. Welcome to the introduction of part two of my new book, Read This Before Medical School, How to Study Smarter and Live Better While Excelling in Class and on Your Year Assembly or Complex Board Exams with my co-authors Greg Rodden of the Physiology by Physio podcast and Ted O'Connell of Crush Step 1, Step 2 Secrets, and many others. First, a quick note. As we've been working on this book for a good chunk of this past year, I haven't been able to blog nearly as much as I'd like to. So if you have any interest in maybe writing a story, whether it be about medicine, about study skills, anything on those topics, please visit freemeded.org slash blogs to check out some of the past material that we've written about. If you'd like to offer to write a guest post, please send us a message. So as a recap, in the last episode, we covered class and home study methods, learning tools from cognitive psychology, how to form more effective study groups and collaborations, and work-life balance. Please go check part one of this mini-series if you've missed it. In part two, we're going to focus on the MedEdge method. This is our three-part system based on education science and our combined medical experiences to help you tackle your medical exams. There are many bits and pieces of information out there from other sources and videos, but none really combine everything together into a very concise method, a comprehensive method like the MedEdge method is. This part of the book is much shorter in page length than part one, but that's by design. We really wish to make it a succinct reference to tackle your exams. So let's look at some of the sections within part two. To start off with, it's important to know the background of the board exams and to get into the test writer's mindset to better understand what to expect and what they expect from us. One part of this is the anatomy of the question. If you're in med school, you might already be familiar with this topic. You have the vignette or the question stem. You then have the interrogatory, also called the leading question, which is usually the last sentence in the first paragraph or the vignette. And then you have the answer choices. But there are certain rules that adorn how these are written, how the interrogatory in specific is written. And knowing some of these rules ahead of time, knowing the guidelines that test writers must follow is very important to help you get in the right mindset when tackling these questions. We also go over the history of the NBME and the gold book in which guides a lot of their materials, the NBME being the National Board of Medical Examiners. Links to all of the reference materials that we cover are also provided within the book, so you can really dive deep if you'd like to know more about these topics. We also touch on some of the materials needed, which include a comprehensive review resource, whether that be a book series or video series, something to really supplement what you received in medical school, board style cubics, simulated exam materials. And we don't really cover which one is best. That's really up to the student and where they are and where they want to be. But knowing some of the differences that we cover here is very, very useful to a medical student. We're also big advocates for keeping an assessment journal. So this assessment journal can be a record of your past schedules, performance metrics, resources used, etc. And you can use the tools from part one that we covered, but we also give you many more that you can add in in part two, specifically for your assessment journal. Keeping a track of this and keeping a track of your progress or maybe lack of progress is a great guidance for how to better shape your future study habits and make sure you're not just going in circles, wasting time. We also cover in more detail how to really structure your dedicated board study time and how to personalize it to fit your own needs. It can be really difficult to know where to focus, how to focus on it, and a lot of the material out there or third-party testing simulations give you only basic knowledge. So we give you an equation that'll help you find your potential gains for each discipline or subject. 
We also go over some example questions and show you how to look at them in a certain way, what red flags to look for, and some of the proper methodology for approaching board style questions. Though it might seem like common sense, many times it's not emphasized that you should notice things like the site of care, the demographics, certain key factors, and how to double check everything to make sure you haven't accidentally thought something was important when it wasn't or missed an important factor. These are all covered in much greater detail. Students often also face fatigue or hit roadblocks or plateaus in their studying. And this is just a normal process. This is how we learn, especially with very intricate material. But knowing how to use deliberate practice and how to get past those plateaus is very difficult. And a lot of instructors don't have a lot of background in education. They have it in medicine, so they know their topic, but they can't always help guide us on how to get past our plateaus. And this is really why we created the MedEdge method. So this three-part series includes the basic exam technique, the tiebreaker technique, and the post-exam autopsy. So you might have heard of bits of some of these methods before, but they weren't usually put in a succinct and easy-to-follow method such as this. So to start off with, you might want to ask yourself, do you know how you will approach the board exams? Do you know all of the tools available to you? Which ones you will use? Which ones you might not want to use? How much time you'll have and how much difference in time it might make if you use certain tools or not. They can slow you down, but they could be very useful too. How about how to determine the main three or four key features in each vignette? What if you're picking the wrong ones? How do you know if you're picking the wrong ones? And how do you rank these so that you get to the more accurate answer for each question or as much as possible? These are some of the topics that we cover in the basic exam technique. But we also give you examples on how to manage your studies over the long haul and with proper records. So it's not just a basic technique. It is a full self-assessment over the long term. We also cover the different types of testing errors. Sometimes you might know, I'm making this same mistake all the time, but you don't have the vernacular for it. You don't have the language for it. So it's very difficult to identify where you're making the mistakes. And if it's hard to identify it, it's hard to know how to fix it. So we have three different categories of common testing errors. And these are the negligence errors, the test procedure errors, and the knowledge errors. With these three main categories, along with their subcategories, we further define the types of error, give an example of each, and propose a way to correct them. It's invaluable to recognize these errors you are making, especially early on, so that you can work to prevent them from happening in the future. But again, it's very difficult to correct yourself if you don't have the language. The next section is the tiebreaker technique, which is a four-step process. Ties are inevitable for most students, and they're going to happen within your testing experiences. This is actually by design in the gold book from the NBME. So having a pre-prepared method for tackling these can help decrease stress and anxiety and time on test day. Now the post-exam autopsy is probably one of the most important things we cover in this MedEdge method, at least for your pre-preparation time. And this uses the errors from above and the principles of deliberate practice to make an effortful improvement on your previously weak subjects. But this is a commonly overlooked and skipped step for students because of the effort required. We also have many charts and tables available throughout the book, and we've created a free download at freemeded.org medstudent. Scroll down, download the free essentials PDF, and that'll give you some of the basic information covered in this book. Just a few tools to help you out, help get started. But we have many, many, many more throughout the book. Now I want to take a second out to say, if you have not done so yet, please do go and subscribe to my new show, The One Minute Preceptor Podcast. If you're listening to this, there's a good chance that you are preparing for or might already be in your clinical rotations. This is a great reference for advice on your clinical years in medicine, how to get letters of recommendation, how to prepare for the many subspecialties you might have clinical rotations in. We cover great interviews from leading educators, from physicians, from a bunch of really, really interesting people that have great advice that I wish I had known before my clinical rotations, and they can really help you out. So please go find the One Minute Preceptor podcast, subscribe, tell your friends. So to recap part two, or it's a much shorter section page-wise, but there's a lot of very dense information in this, and we can only cover so much in this audio episode. But we cover an introduction to the anatomy of a board-style question and to the test writer's mentality to help students better understand the rules of the game. We go over a few examples to give the conceptual framework of the rules and the designs required by the gold book used by the NBME. And there's a similar one for DO students, but the rules are pretty similar. We also focus on test-taking strategies, how to overcome study fatigue and plateaus with the MedEdge method, which includes the basic exam technique, the tiebreaker technique, 
and the post-exam autopsy to make a directed and effortful improvement to your scores. In the next episode, we'll cover part three of the book, which is Accelerated Learning for Medical Students. And this is really a lot of the material covered in the Medical Anemonous podcast. It's a summarization of a lot of accelerated learning, speed reading, memory techniques, and will give more in-depth strategies and charts and tables within the book that you can follow to start implementing these yourselves. It can be very difficult just listening to a podcast and trying to train with them, but we give you tools and techniques within the book to follow. Again, please head over to freemeded.org slash medstudent if you would like to download the free PDF or if you'd like information on purchasing the actual book, ebook or paperback. You can also send us an email to themedicalanemnist at gmail.com or any of the free med ed social media just to contact us and say hi. If there's any material that you would like to see in future episodes or anyone you'd like to see interviewed, also please send them my way. Do check the show notes, which will have links to the book page to a couple other interviews that have relevance to this section of accelerated learning of memory techniques. And stay tuned for part three of Read This Before Medical School. We hope you enjoyed this episode. For links to connect to us, email us, or for previous episodes, please see the show notes. We'd also love to hear from you. So please send an email or join us on the Medical Neminous Mastermind Facebook group. Any ideas, tips, tricks, people that you'd like to hear interviewed, we'd love to hear it. Any advice to make the show better and more enjoyable would be greatly appreciated.